Hello, everyone. Hope you are well on this Saturday morning. It is about 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here as I record this. And it is, I look out the window here, and it is bright and sunny. And I know we are about to get out there and do a little work on the little homestead this morning while it's still fairly cool. But I wanted to talk about how I believe, and I know many of you may already be doing this, but if not, it is time to circle the wagons, so to speak. And I'll go more into that. I also have a very good passage that I will share with you. It's short and sweet, but it's powerful. Uh, but first, real quick tip. And I've mentioned this before, but rain barrels don't underestimate rain barrels. We have two, two large ones set up here. And I don't think I've shown them. I'm going to have to do a video on that, just show our setup. But we noticed earlier in the week, and we use the, the runoff, the rain catchment to water a good bit of our garden. And especially the herbs down here close to the house. And we noticed that here lately because we had had rain for a while. <clears throat> the barrels were getting low. I mean, they were almost empty. And we had a rain overnight, like two nights ago. And I didn't, I didn't think it rained that much. I mean, it didn't, it wasn't heavy or anything like that. It was no thunderstorm. But I was surprised the next morning. I looked over, walked over here, and looked, and both barrels are absolutely full, overflowing. So it doesn't take long for them to refill, and you get a lot of water for uh for just other purposes you know watering plants and such as that now some people have issues with rainwater. now if you're going to drink it you need to filter it of course but we use it to to water some of the plants so quick tip i'll do a video i need to do a video on our setup there i'll show you that circle the wagons there is so to speak you know uh or literally uh there is a great heaviness in the air, and I'm not talking about just the smoke. And it is time to focus as much as we can on, when I say circle the wagons, you know, look at your place from the outside in as well, and, and focus on what you can do to improve your area, your land, your property, your community, those right around you that you trust, you never know. Um, and I'm going to go through several things here, but I think we need to do that. Now, I hear a lot of people say, you know, uh, that they're, that they're uh, so concerned, they're almost paralyzed, they're staying in their homes, they don't want to get out at all. Do your life, you know, do your thing. However, you, we can still do the, the same thing. We can still do uh, our life and do the things, but also prepare. You know, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Uh, so several things, the three things that just came right off the top of my head, of course, the spirit first, the spiritual readiness, you know, let's keep in prayer. If you have a church, uh, absorb into that. If not, you know, others, others that are like-minded, you know, let's support and stay in prayer and communication. Uh, look for a church that is biblically based. I know that is difficult to find because I believe we are in a battle, a spiritual, a spiritual battle right now. It's not so much physical, at least not yet, but it is spiritual in nature for sure. If you just look around a little bit, you can see it. It'll take long to see it. So I think that's number one. Number two is to keep, keep stacking. And rotate. I know we keep talking about stacking and all that. And you're like, dog, I got plenty of food. I got plenty of this and that. But look at what you have. It may need to be rotated. You may have stuff that's expired or close to it. Move that up front to where you can go ahead and start using that. And uh, and then and then get new, new stuff to replace it. So rotating is, and looking at your inventory, being organized is super important. Number three, live healthy as possible. Um, I saw a video and I can't even remember what the creator was. I should have saved it, but it was talking about how it was talking to doctors, oncologists and 
funeral home directors, embalmers, uh, staff of funeral home homes. And it is alarming just in the last six months how many cancer, uh, uh, how much cancer they're seeing and how many cases the it's not just an uptick, it is a huge ramp up. They said it's overwhelming uh, the, the number of cases of cancer they are seeing in the young people as well, all ages, but young people, 20s, 30s, 40s. And it is just, and you know, you're not going to hear about it on the news or just in your, in your local paper. They're not going to talk about that. Uh, but it, it, you know, it's an aggressive types of cancer that where this person person seem looks healthy and seemingly is healthy otherwise but get something and then boom in weeks months they're gone so it's like they it's so aggressive and comes on them so fast that treatment hardly has a chance you know so they're saying this is they're, they're seeing so many more cases than they ever have and it's getting more and more now we have some theories, of course, as to why that is. I won't go into any details there, you can imagine. But, you know, it could be a number of things, actually. But live as healthy as possible. Your food, your movement, your, you know, and I know here we we need to do more moving here as well. We, we do a lot, but I think we do a fair amount. But, um, you know, the more you move, the better. You know, the more you're, as much as you're able. And when you venture out, when you do, when you do get out there in the community, you know, I think we, and this is just my, my feelings, and I've mentioned this before, but uh, going gray, I think it's important to go gray to a certain point, at least blend in, not call it, not call attention to yourself, keep a low profile uh, and keep it moving. Okay. Uh, don't put yourself in situations that are risky, that are, that are uh, high risk. You know, uh, at the same time, in our interactions, let's stay true to our faith, our convictions, our traditional values. Let's be the example. Be kind and courteous. But you know what I'm going to say? Take no dog squeeze. Stand firm. Be ready to defend yourself. Okay. We don't need to go on the offensive, but we need to be ready to be defensive if needed. Okay. I'm talking about avoiding conflict. When I'm driving now, I don't even, I don't know when I've blown my horn. I don't even blow my horn anymore. I don't care if somebody cuts me off, you know, gives me the one finger salute. I don't care. I, I, I let it go. I, wait, I, I don't even wave. I used to wave because they may mistake that for the one finger salute. I used to blare on the horn back. At I don't do that. I'm giving them no, I, I'm avoiding the crazy as much as possible. Okay. Now, if the crazy comes to you and you've done all you can to avoid it, de-escalate whatever, and you and there's nothing left to do but to engage in self-defense. At that point, we need to be ready, and I mean ready, to defend ourselves with max force. Okay. No hesitation. Leave no doubt. Now, and I've heard from some of you that sometimes, in many cases, all that takes is to show a willingness to defend yourself. Okay? In other words, let them know in no uncertain, in no uncertain terms that you are capable of defending yourself. Now, I've heard from some of you that all it took was simply showing a personal defense tool. That was enough, all right? Because most of these predators want an easy target, okay? They see you as a possible easy target, but then they see quickly that, oh no, maybe not so much an easy target. They're going to move on, okay? If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Share what you think about that too, because I'm probably leaving out stuff, all right? Develop and fortify your land, your home. I don't care if it's an apartment that you rent. Do what you can. If you need better locks on your doors, effort to do that. You know, uh, be a hard target. 
all right you want to be the type of target to where that that predator is like i just need to move on I, i'm going to go to an easier one okay or i'm just going to going to come you know i'm going to go somewhere else there was a time when shifting gears here a little bit on a there was a time when I had a measure, I had at least some measure of trust in our government and, and our institutions. And there was a time when I had a lot of trust, actually, when I was a younger man. And even, even as I got older, I, I, that, that measure of trust has decreased. Now it is gone. It is zilch. It is zero, people. Zero. I don't care what institution you're talking about. If it's government institutions, I have zero trust in them. Okay? It is all gone at this point. Especially over the last three years. It has slowly eroded. And now it is not. A, it is not a zero. Corruption is on a scale that would make ancient Rome blush. Okay? I think that's where we are now. And that's where I, I talk about being gray and, and, and keep trying to keep a low profile as much as possible. Don't call attention to yourself. Um, you know, that's difficult, you know, but I believe we're in a dark time. I really, I, I really do. And, um, you know, we're in a time when those of faith and conservative values, morals, traditional values, uh, are, are, are going to become a target. We are. We've been, actually. We have been. Um, testing is coming. The arrows are coming, so to speak. And, and uh, you know, as figure of speech, but hopefully not literally. But uh, we don't know. Uh, you know, and, and quite possibly persecution. You know, we, we don't know. Uh, you know, things are feel so heavy and, and uh, so much is converging right now on so many levels that uh, I, th I think it's more important than ever with each passing day that that we become uh, even closer to our faith, our God, and uh, and be ready for anything to happen. You know, uh, I, I just feel that more and more with each day and the older the older I get. And I had this thought earlier is that with each passing day that I get older, the more I think that the world, much of the world that we see, at least on the TV and the screens and what we hear is a, uh, is a stage and, 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 and much of it is not what it seems. We don't know what, what, what is real anymore, do we? It's difficult when we when we look at this world, this this world that we're in. It's difficult to know what is real. Now, I can go out in my backyard. That's pretty real. But once I get beyond that much, I don't know what's real. I really don't. And when I watch videos, even some videos and and, and things on the news or the internet, and you need to try to you try to do some research. I, I don't know. Is half of it true? I don't know. I don't know. But I know that there's a potential for things to get super ugly, especially in light of what's been going on the last few days with an ex-politician. You can call it a politician. But that could get very ugly. Very, very ugly. I don't know. It, it might not be. And at the same time, I, I, I keep seeing whenever I pop up any website, I see this guy, Prince Harry. I don't need, is he a prince anymore? I don't know. What is the fascination with that dude? He's just a punk. To me, he just looks like a punk. He's rich, I guess, a rich punk. But what has he done? I mean, what? I don't know. Has he done anything really that's that's productive? I don't know. I don't see the fascination. Anyway, that's just a thought that run through my head earlier, too. But uh, anyway, one thing I was going to mention earlier, too, is as far as circle of wagons, your circle is important. 
and it's important to make good connections and have some backup if possible if things get super ugly i will be honest our circle right here is pretty small i'd be lying if i didn't say if if i said that it was large you know we got all kind of backup we don't it's very small right here with us it's hard to know who to trust it really is we're surrounded by a lot of people but who knows you know if any of you are moving to North Georgia, let me know. We can talk. You know, that's a thought. Speaking of faith, I have a good verse I'm going to share. It is from Proverbs. I've been on Proverbs here lately. Mrs. Dog is doing the Bible app thing where they're going through the Bible cover to cover. And they're in Proverbs now. And I listen to uh, the the, uh, the podcast that she over here a lot on there so i need to go through it myself but a lot of good stuff proverbs chapter 12 verse 25 says anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down but a good word makes him glad amen that is so true i mean the more we stay in the good word uh the, the less anxiety we will feel the more prepared we will be so let's keep that in mind. It's funny how the Bible in so many ways and in so many instances is telling us, is urging us not to worry so much because it can make us sick. It really can. Share your thoughts on all this. I know I, I covered a lot, a big range there. But uh, anyway, let's take care. Let's be safe out there when you're out and about. God bless you. I'll see you soon.